Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is a builder sustainable community monthly meeting. Today is May 17th. The time is 1 p.m. So uh, you all know me. This is Josephine Salvakumar, Western Sector Lead Planner. Uh, before we do a quick introduction, I would like to introduce Sophie Kotzker. She's a new planner who's joined our team and um, she will be uh, taking over District 1 and she'll be overseeing District 1. So you have Sophie here. Um, so I'll let her give a brief introduction. Hey everyone, um, like Josephine said, my name is Sophie Kasker and I'll be the new District 1 um, sector planner. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Sophie. Let's quickly go around, do an introduction so Sophie gets to know who, who you all are. And let's start with the county. Amy. Okay. <clears throat> I'm Amy Mante. I'm Deputy Director for the Department of Planning. I am Gunei Job, Community Planning Division Chief. Thank you. Um, okay, I have, I'm going to read on from the list here. Uh, Brian? Hi, I'm Brian Morris, um, legislative aide for Councilman Quirk. Jay Dillo. Jay Dillo, uh, co-chair for UMBC Neighborhood Relations Committee, resident and also current president for the Southwest Visions Foundation. Joe Rigger. Joe. Is he muted? It must be. Joe, can you hear us? I think he might have us muted. It looks like he's on a another call. On a call. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Joe's yeah, he, he's nodding. Okay. So Joe is our UMBC representative and he is what secretary? Joe is Joe's uh leads up UMBC transit and then he's one of the board members for Southwest Visions. Right. Thank you. Uh, Lisa? Hey, good afternoon. I'm Lisa Auction. I'm the Associate VP for Engagement at UNBC and also a new board member with Southwest Visions. Thank you. Mary, Mary Ann Richmond. Hi, uh, I'm Marianne Richmond. Uh, I'm Government and Community Relations Manager at UNBC and also a resident of the community. Thank you. Paula? Hi, I'm Paula, Secretary of the Southwest Foundation. Uh, your voice isn't that clear, um, but we have Paula with us. Um, I have one phone call uh, ending in 1-5. That, that would be me, Marilyn Maitland, probably? Yes, Madeline. Hi, Madeline. Yeah, hi. Good to be with all of you. Uh, I am the uh, President Emeritus of the Baltimore County Arts Guild and remain on the board. And I am a board member of Southwest Visions, and I live in the southwest part of the county. Thank you. And we have Bettina here. Bettina, we are doing a small introduction because we have a new planner join our team. That's Sophie, and she'll be overseeing District 1 areas. Bettina, if you could introduce yourself. Hi, good afternoon. Bettina Tebow. I'm the executive director of the Greater Arbutus Business Association and member of Southwest Visions. Thanks, everyone. Um, so Hi, we, Joe. yeah. Hey, it's Joe. Oh, there he is. Yeah, come, come on, Joe. I kept calling you. It looked like you were. <laughs> I had a great phone call from. Okay. Uh, from somebody. So anyway, so Joe Regeer, uh, UMBC Transit uh, on the board of uh, the Greater Our Business uh, Business Business Association and Southwest Visions, and presently sitting in Okamoka. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, that's yeah. He showed me his coffee. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you. And we have exciting news and announcements. So let me start sharing my. Screen. Can you all see it? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
So we will quickly go over the state announcement. And in the last meeting, we talked about the project inventory. Uh, so we can go over that and uh, uh, Jay can give more updates. Uh, Jay and uh, we had a discussion uh, with the project inventory, which you all identified after the previous meeting. And then we can talk about um, uh, the due dates and how you're going to apply and uh, when you have to submit and um, all those things. So I still had this here, though I know we all went through the introduction. I just want to let you know that uh, Jenna Nicole from Merit Properties, she did email me saying she's moved out of state and she is um, she's dropping out from the um, uh, steering committee or the group. Um, so I did I, I I still asked her if there is any other contacts if she wants to include for Merit Properties, I'm happy to include. Uh, so just want to let you all know. So um, as you all know, the state did make its announcement. The round was announced May 12th. I sent you all the uh, information. You all got, I believe you all got my email and read that. So that's been uh, funding opportunities that's announced for the community legacy. Uh, strategic demolition fund um, and uh, Bernie funds and uh, there are other funds. Um, I know we did talk about the community legacy funding and um, I did highlight that there is uh, um, a total of 8 million capital uh, which the state made announcement and uh, the portal should be open Thursday. Uh, that's my understanding. Uh, that's what they told me. And I know that Jay has already set up the, um, has the username, password, and you're registered with the portal. Um, 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 and I, I think you have all your paperwork verified. Is that right, Jay? That is correct. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I just want to verify that and then they do have uh, training which they are giving for the applic uh, I mean um, guidelines on how to do the application in the portal, how to submit. Uh, there are two virtual sessions which they are offering um, on May 25th and the application is due on July 13th at 3 p.m. I'm uh, I'm sure you might have seen this too. I sent you all these links. Um, I already connected Jay with your regional, uh, what do they call it? the DHCD regional project manager, which uh, who is Jean Cannon. Her email ID and phone is there, and I'm sure uh, Jay, you talked to her or exchanged emails. We we did. We exchanged a couple of emails because Jean was the one who accepted our bylaws and articles. Okay. So, and then let me know that they were, everything was approved and, and we were good. Okay, good. So, okay. So those two are done. So you're, you're set to go. You, you're just waiting for the portal to open, right? Correct. Okay. So the two, uh, virtual application workshop on 25th is 10 AM, or you can also do 1 PM. I would like you to put that in your calendar. Please go register. There's a link here. And I will also, I think I might have sent the link already, but with this follow up uh, meeting email, I will send this link again. It will be helpful because this is, uh, you are doing it for the first time. It will be very helpful for the first time applicants to go through the training. Uh, I myself have uh, registered for the 1 p.m. So I highly encourage you, at least one or two of you, to attend the training. Josephine, quick question. Do they do we know how long it is? Is it a half hour, an hour? What should we plan for? One to one and a half hours, I guess, but I can check that again with Olivia. That's my recollection. Okay. I last spoke to her, but let me check with her again. Thank you. So I'll make a note. I will let you know that too in my follow up email.
So the projects, this is something which we talked about in the last meeting. Uh, so you all did your homework, you identified the projects, and then um, we all discussed that Jay was going to send me the uh, um, improvements identified so that we have the specific improvements in the areas, which we did. And then I discussed with Jay and we did um, narrow down to see which which uh, wh uh, what particular items can be put in the uh, applications. And I did connect Jay to different sources and different agencies. So I'll just turn it over to Jay to give updates. I'm sure he talked to different people. I did. Chatting so... here, and if you could share, I just had a screenshot. You could share your bigger. The bigger version. Let me see if I yes. got it handy. Um. Okay, you can present now. Should be coming up. Hopefully you're seeing it. Yes, I can. Um, I mean, I can see it, but I'm, I'm not sure if people want to enlarge that a little bit. How's oh, that? Yeah. It's always hard for me because I'm on a really big monitor in my office. <laughs> so, um, I did reach out and talk to several folks. Um, uh, probably the conversation, the longest conversation I had that was really, really helpful and beneficial was uh, with Christine McPherson from the state. So Christine was really helpful. Um, and I know when we had our conversation, Josephine, on some of these projects, we were looking at other potential funding sources that were kind of outside of sustainable communities, um, like the Safe Roads to School project or, or grant program. Um, so we're trying to make some connections there. We've done some, I've done some homework on that one, um, because for those of you who don't know, many of the projects we've listed, especially under Shelbourne pedestrian improvements could actually be done under a different grant. That's all about improving the safety of getting students to school. So, um, she also suggested, uh, Josephine to connect with Olivia, um, on, yes. on some of these. Um, just because she thought that would be really uh, just a good place for us to start, as well as with Jean. Um, one of the one of the pieces I did want to just update folks on from the conversation with Christine. Um, we've been talking about Mer the Maryland Main Street program as well. That's actually the program she runs for the state. Um, she basically had a suggestion that usually they're looking for you to kind of be up and underway with a community legacy grant or something along those lines for at least a year or so before you apply for the Maryland Main Street program. Um, and she did a really good job of explaining to me the difference between the affiliate uh, designation versus the full designation, um, which was really, once again, really helpful to know. Um, I, I think one of the things that we probably should figure out a little bit was I think Josephine when you and Agona and I went through our list we were kind of thinking of a, a dollar amount for our first community legacy grant um <laughs> she she encouraged to maybe dream a little bigger um and but also making sure it's projects that we can deliver on so um I think that was another part of of that conversation but uh Christine gave me a few more follow-ups Part of what we were doing was we were waiting to make sure that our bylaws and articles were going to be accepted because they're under the old name, which was the ABPA Foundation. And I think most of you know, we've changed to the Southwest Visions Foundation name and have been working through things with the IRS to get that done officially. Um, but she did contact me. Um, Jean Cannon, that is, contacted me last Friday, late in the day, letting me know that everybody was fine everybody had signed off on those bylaws and articles with the current with with the name and also the fact that we've i think bettina wisely a couple of years ago uh put in a trading as designation with the state license registration office so that helped 
um, just connect all the dots for everybody who was who was on that. Um, one of the other conversations that took place was with Stan Jacobs. So Stan was really helpful, um, Josephine, as you could imagine, because we talked about the boost funds, um, which once again was another interesting set of funds that we have the ability to access that might actually help us kind of pare down our list of projects that we're actually writing community legacy uh, grant application for, um, just because of how those boost funds can be used, what they can be used for. So it's really just helping us narrow down that list. Um, he also mentioned the facade grant program, um, as well as kind of a, an exterior loan, exterior improvements a loan program that they have. So once again, it kind of allowing us to look at other funding sources, which the Southwest Visions Board will be doing that at our upcoming board meeting. Um, just looking at the list and what can we identify to actually target community legacy grant for or grant application for versus some of these other funds uh, that have come into play. Um, and then lastly, uh, the conversation with with Gene Cannon. Um, so Gene and I have been emailing a lot. We actually haven't been able to get on the phone, but our first hurdle really was to make sure that our articles and bylaws were gonna be accepted as is. So as of Friday, they were. So now we're trying to find some time uh, this week to see if we can't get on the phone, and kind of discuss things in a little bit more detail with each other. So I'll stop there to see if anybody has any questions or comments. Um, so follow up question, Jay, I, I know we went through each item here in the inventory. Now that you talk to different sources and agencies, what are the specific thing you're putting in the community legacy and how much? I, I think I'm scrolling down a little bit because I think there's really two, which is kind of where we landed and it's really just kind of circling up with the board and, and all parties involved, but I think we're kind of leaning towards the, the walkability improvements for East Drive, as well as the signage and frontage improvements. Um, and that was really one of my questions for Gene, unless you or Amy or anyone knows the answer to this is, you know, when we write that community legacy grant, or can we write more than one for separate projects or do we write one grant for one sum of money and then just describe the work we would do with those funds? Um, in the past, I believe it's been one application. I mean, for one program, I mean, you wouldn't do, you can't do one application for Bernie and community legacy and strategic demolition. They each have their own um, application, but if you're doing an application for community legacy, and you've got various projects, you would put it all in that um, application. Got it. That perfect. Thank you, Amy. Because mm -hmm. sure. um, I think that's really what we've been leaning towards. Because once again, when we think about what are the projects we could actually get accomplished, what are the things we could do, do them effectively? It's you know not necessarily a, a large sum of money that we would be requesting, um, but it would be something I think we can get accomplished in our first year. Cause that was one of the things that I've heard as a reoccurring theme, rather it's been talking to you, Josephine or Stan or folks from the state. Cause I did have also a quick conversation with Nick, um, Mar. Um, it really is. It sounds like the first year really is everybody just kind of watching, which I already knew from my prior day job, you know, mm -hmm. that first time you get a grant, everybody wants to see that you have the financial capacity to manage the funds and deliver the project. Right. Right. So, so from what I'm seeing, close to hundred. Yeah, I think that's that's probably. And once again, I think part of it now is a little bit of scrubbing of our numbers just to make sure, you know, we've got got a little bit, not much, but a little bit of a time, week or so, to like really scrub scrub the numbers hard to see if this is, you know, are we asking for too much? Are we not asking for enough? I'm always a big fan of making sure we've got a solid budget. Um, and then we'll submit that application. But yes, it'd probably be for somewhere between, I'm thinking it's probably gonna be between somewhere between 75 and 100, which when I originally said to Christine McPherson, like, oh, we're thinking 25 to 50, she really encouraged to go a little bit higher. Um, and and I asked her how high, and she's like, well, I really can't tell you. But she goes, 
But I think if you ask for double what you're thinking, you probably could get a couple of your projects you're talking about accomplished. And that would be something that once again, would be, you know, well received. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was going to say, because most of the time, whatever you ask for, you may get half of it. So <laughs> right. if you want 50,000, ask for 100 k <laughs> <laughs> Right, exactly. Right. So right. I missed, I'm sorry, Josephine, for taking time. Um, but I missed the other project. So one was the walkability for East Drive. And what was the other one? The other one was the, the signage and frontage improvements for the businesses along East Drive. So okay. that was one of those ones we talked about that day. Right. Um, right. And I think that's, we actually have a current business owner and property owner um, mm -hmm. who worked with the resident and call program or the architect on call program um, mm -hmm. with the county, has drawings, has an interest. Joe and I and some other folks have met with him a couple of times now. Um, and he's really excited about utilizing um, potentially his building as maybe one of our first projects. Mm -hmm. So, one, so the, I'm sorry, finish it. No, uh, I was just going to say, because I think the other thing that was important that I learned from not only both of you, but also from our, my state conversations is making sure that you have drawings in hand, right? <laughs> and, and this particular project and this particular business owner actually does have drawings in hand that are architectural drawings. So that kind of helps our process. Say, so Jay, a comment on that uh, 25,000 here for this signage frontage. Um, is that in respect to other businesses other than this 5400, 5410 uh, Steve Moran project? I, I don't think we've decided any of that yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was going to ask that because you, we did discuss about the 5644 and 5307 East Drive and Southwest Boulevard for other county programs. So what are the, I mean, I don't remember if you ever told me particular address or business for this signage and frontage improvements. I don't, I, I can't so, recall it. Yeah, so Bet Bettina, Paul and I had a conversation, a quick conversation on this topic oh, about two weeks ago. And there are a few buildings. I think one of the things we have to figure out is are we writing this for just one big project or for the signage and frontage, or are we going to try and reach out and, and maybe support a couple of businesses all at one time? Um, so I think that's part of our homework to get done as well. Okay. Um, one of the businesses we identified that we wanted to help actually put signage up about two days after Patina and Paul and I met. So it was, we don't have to help them. They took care of it themselves. That's good, right? Okay. I have a question. May I? Sure. Um, so my question is when you talk about the signage and the frontage, are you talking about putting in a facade improvement grant that you are going to be administering? So two separate buckets, right? So there's, as you know, there's the, the facade improvement grant that Stan Jacobs made me aware of. Um, so, so part of it is Joe, Joe referenced uh, the building right there where Okamoka is that whole stretch that's owned by Steve Moran. It could be that we work with Steve Moran to go after that bucket of that grant funding to help support his facade improvement work. Um, and then we utilize community legacy dollars to help the other businesses in the area. So you will be having your own grant that you're going to be administering. For example, whatever number you come up with, um, you know, we can give you up to ten thousand dollars or whatever, one thousand or two thousand. I'm just making up these numbers, and then you know they come up with a match or something like that. Is that what you have in in mind? Correct. Correct. Okay. Cause, okay. Because I think we talked about it the one day. I can't remember. I've had so many conversations in the last three weeks, but. We want the businesses to be somewhat invested in it. It's so that's what we're really hoping for is that, you know, we can, we can support a few businesses in the region or in on East drive who literally can contribute a portion of the expense to get new signs for their business or do some improvements to the frontage. So that is the plan. 
and you are yet to identify the businesses, right? Correct. Or, okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. Working, working with obviously with Patina and everybody at GABA to, uh -huh. to help identify those businesses. Okay. Um, so on my part, I did check with the DPWT. Um, I did tell you with the sidewalk improvements, I just want to check with them if anything is in their radar. So what I heard is that uh, over the years, there has been a lot of uh, requests for the sidewalk on Shelburne and Sulphur Spring Road to Linden Avenue, I guess. And the uh, previously the challenges which they had, it seems was that um, there has been with the approach with UMBC that uh, for permission to construct these sidewalks along the properties of the Shelbourne Road. And there were concerns about uh, the maintenance and there wasn't like um, cooperation from UMBC. So I just wanted to let you all know because we have representatives from the UMBC too. If uh, if there is additional comments, Lisa and Mary Ann, please feel free to let me know because this is what I heard from DPWT. So I can jump in just because I think if we're talking about shellboard, I think that that walking path that now UMBC is creating will help will help with some of that. The one, so, the one that's scheduled for fall. So, right. uh, uh, which exact segment is UMBC working on? Our, uh, with the our property only, mm -hmm. uh, on Shelburne from Linden to Poplar. Right. And this is a um, softscape walking path, um, possibly. Gravel, uh, possibly paving stone of some sort. Um, we, I think, will begin work in the fall. I don't think it will be ready by the fall because um, we have um, MDE requirements, and there has to be a, you know, a study by MDE mm -hmm. before we go to construction. Um, so that's where we are with that. Okay. So, so Josephine, just so you know, so that's about a third of the stretch of Shelbourne that we're talking about. There's two thirds that basically go from being, I'll just say county residents who have their properties. Board of Ed has a chunk, obviously, because of the middle school. And then Park and Rec has a responsibility because of athletic field that's there. And that makes up the other two thirds of what we call the Shelbourne Road improvements. Okay. I can again take back to DPWT <laughs> and find out because I can't answer this. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And just, UMBC, and, I heard this. So I just wanted to clarify with you all. And Josephine, just so you know, <laughs> the frustration from the community comes from because that's what they've been saying literally for almost the 20 years I've lived here. Mm hmm. So we're trying to just move off of that and figure out how do we actually just get these things taken care of and done. Cause I know that Mandy in her new role and her old role has done a lot of pushing to get certain pieces of that accomplished, but we still got a couple more pieces we got to do to fill in the, the gaps. And I know safe routes to schools was something that we tried to, I know, I think they came to a neighborhood relations meeting one time. Um, and that we talked about that, but again, it is a multi basically agency approach between the county, um, between the schools. And I know, you know, it, the neighbors there too, that is private property. So just getting everybody to the table and then finding funding. Yep. So I just want to make sure that uh, I checked all that you put forth uh your group put forth jay so that uh whatever is feasible through the agencies i want to make sure that uh, uh you are connected with the right people to get the answers um 
Is that anything else? Like, um, so I, I have a quick question. I don't know who from the county or anybody, quite honestly, are there, are there, I don't know how to explain, are there kind of any types of emergency assistance grants that are available from time to time to support different businesses for capital projects? I'm specifically thinking, and you probably already know that, like, our friends over at the Caldensville Amy Church um, is they they recently had an accident where somebody, thank goodness, didn't go all the way into the church, but caused some damage. And just being in that construction world, I know probably what they're going to get from insurance isn't going to cover that. And it's a historic building, and I'm not sure their congregation has the financial ability to step up and fill in the gap. So I'm just trying to be a little strategic and proactive to see if there's a way we could support them as that will come on that project will probably be happening sooner rather than later. There is, um, and there is, a, there is some specific historic religious grant opportunities out there. Um, and uh, we connected with uh, uh, Ms. Pastor Alicia Hudnall from the church. Mandy, you're breaking up. I can't hear you clearly. Uh, I don't know about others. I didn't catch the grant which you were talking about. Can you hear me now? It's muffled, but it's okay. Sorry. Wow. No. Nope. Okay, how about now? It's better. Okay. Um, there is, I, the name escapes me, but there is a specific religious historic grant. I have to pull it up. Um, and that goes specifically for churches, and we do have churches apply for it. It's, I believe it is through the state, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but we have shared that as well with Pastor Hudnall, and and okay. let, let them know, you know, some other opportunities out there. There are there are there there's lots of grants out there, um, and I think it would be we have a grants department from Baltimore County where you know, businesses and organizations can reach out on their own as well to figure out what grants are out there. Um, and I think that would be good because I know they kind of are coming and going and some of them may not come across our desks. Um, oh yeah, it's my, uh, it must be, sorry, it must be my mic that's not working well. Sorry guys. So, um, I had another question, Jay. Um, it's, uh, it's for you and for, I mean, it's for the group. Uh, so, uh, so it's going to be Southwest vision. Who's going to write the application. So, um, who, who is, who is doing it actually. So, in, in all honesty, it'll probably be myself or Carolyn, since we have. That's what we've done for our day jobs for a long time. Okay. So, but obviously our board, which there's several of them here who will be involved in the review and the process leading up to the actual submission. Okay. And if I could, if I may ask, I have to ask these questions. Um, this is going to be your first time. Do you think that there is any type of support or help that you will need from the county? Um, in terms of like writing the grant or even managing the project, I'm just trying to have a sense of the capacity of the organizations. I think as far as writing the grant goes, I, I don't think we will since Carolyn and I have pretty extensive grant writing backgrounds. Yeah. Um, but I also know well enough to say, once I attend the training, I'll know even better. <laughs> Cause I just don't, I haven't seen their application before, but I'm pretty sure it's standard grant material. Um, some of that we already have written. It's just a matter of getting it into whatever format they're looking for. Um, and then as far as actually administering it, I think once again, that'll really depend on if we're successful and how much we receive and what those projects are. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, that's probably where there might be a little bit more of assistance needed. Um, we just feel pretty good about the grant writing experience because our board has a lot of grant writing experience and background. Just everybody's 
done it in different capacities. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. You no, know, thank you. I thought Josephine actually had, maybe it's Sophie's going to write it for us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So, um, anything else? Any other questions? Uh, Paula says, I can't hear Mandy's remarks. Yeah, it wasn't really clear, uh, Paula, like uh, Mandy said she had some issues with her mic. I think Bettina's putting her hand up or she's waving to us. Or both. I was, well, hi. <laughs> hi, Bettina. So I was just curious, um, I know I had brought this up before about the funding to get some of the um, technical drawings and stuff that we need. Is that part of this conversation of this um, per particular point in time that we're at? Is this in this section or is that coming down the road? I'm just curious to find out about, you know, that availability, that funding to get some of the, you know, technical drawings that we may need and whatnot, besides, you know, the architect on call stuff, which I know we already have, but, you know, for other projects or whatnot, I was just trying to be clear on that. I think Jake brought this up and didn't you talk about this with the state, Jay? I did. That's what I, I failed to mention this earlier. That was part of my conversation with Christine McPherson because she said a lot of people use the TAG grants, uh -huh. those technical assistance grants, Bettina. So we could actually utilize the TAG grant to those funds to actually, like, let's just say, I'm just picking this out of the air, not that we're doing, but the Veterans Memorial that we've been talking about and revamping that, like, we could actually use TAG grants the TAG grant funds to go engage an architect, a landscape architect, get electrical, all the things we need so that we can get a real number to then do the project. Um, but that's what she said. She sees that a lot. Um, also, she did strongly encourage thinking about a technical assistance grant for um, a bigger strategic plan for the region. Um, because some of the state funds do require that you have a strategic plan in place for the region, which we do not have one for anything that's kind of south of Frederick Road or Frederick Avenue. So she suggested that one as well. So, yeah, that sounds like that would be the place for us to go. Any other questions? I don't have anything. I'm so excited that you guys are all set to go. I can't wait for the portal to open for this group and um, yay. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to get the application in and be done and then find out. Yes, so uh, yeah, yeah, check. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have I have one piece of crosstalk for, uh, for Jay. It's Joe. Um, I managed to get through the Verizon hierarchy, and um, we're gonna we're gonna meet with uh, Adam Scott on site here, maybe this week. And uh, the unfortunate news here is that movement of the Verizon cable, which drapes in front of this facade that we want to improve, will probably be a billable event. But he's going to try to minimize that and upgrade the the service to the business at the same time with no increase in funding. Uh, for the inhabitants here. So there's an offset, but uh, we, we didn't incorporate any of that uh, cost in our first look from the architect on call. So I'll try to get a number from him very soon. Thank you. Is this the one uh, that came through architect on call, Joe, the video you sent us? Is that? Okay. Okay. So they're going to look into it now? Yep. Yep. So they're going to do an on-site, and I'll actually have a number. Uh, oh, okay. It also includes BG&E, and that guy is uh, hasn't called me back yet again. But he and I have a few things in business, so he has to call me back. So okay, that's good. Okay, we have fifteen more minutes left. If there is any other questions, um, please let me know. 
If not, I'm happy to let you all go early. <laughs> Sounds like everybody's really busy. They're so quiet. Yes. Right? Yep. Yep. And I do see uh, Mandy has put the information here. Um, I'll just include that in my follow up email so that you all have it. Okay. Perfect. I done here. Anything, any pressing issues or anything? Looks like this group is all set to apply. So good luck, everyone. And don't forget to attend the webinar. Um, and again, it's on May 25th. I will find out um, how long it's going to be, like one hour or two hours. I'll let you know on that. OK, so hearing no other questions. Have a nice afternoon. I will touch base with you all with the follow up emails. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.